Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Lowe's here. We back on the throne of positivity where the first is last and the last is first. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Today, we're going to be talking about three major ways that you can transform your life as a new Christian believer or as a as a person that's interested in becoming a Christian. Uh, this topic came up because, uh, you know, one of my sisters, actually, she's been asking me questions of, you know, how to do this or how to do that. And, you know, she's she's interested in making that change. Uh, various people have asked me these questions of what should I do as a as a new Christian believer? And I believe that it is important that we, you know, give that fresh start, those those new beginning type of information so that we can help individuals get to that maturity or get to that intimacy with Christ. Because I think that something that we forget as Christians is how to be Christian and not just how to be Christian in the righteous sense, but how to be Christian from the perspective of being new to the faith. And I think it's so beautiful that this period, this new period of, of being new with Christ or having this puppy love type of thing is referenced in, in Revelation uh, where it speaks about Christ speaking to the church. Uh, I believe it's at Ephesus where he says, return to your first love. And why is it the first love and not just return to love? It's because the first love is, is as Paul talks about in his epistles, I believe to the Corinthians where he says, love believes all things, it bears all things, it endures all things. And why is that? It's because love is pure, love is holy, it is righteous. And it has that desire to want to please. And I think it's the beautiful part of our lives. And hopefully, if whether you're a new Christian, a seasoned Christian, that these tips will help you. So what are some major ways that you can change your life? I have focused on three specific areas that I think will completely transform your life as a Christian believer. Number one is going to be prayer. Number two is going to be church and community. And number three is going to be music. I believe these are the three areas that can make the biggest difference in your life, whether new or seasoned Christian. Uh, why is prayer important? Prayer is communication with God. It's it's how we communicate with God. How, how do you speak to God if not by prayer? And the unfortunate thing within the church is that you know, we've kind of made prayer out to be almost as if it's this chore or it's something that I have to open the Bible and read the word to God as if he's ignorant to his own word. Or I have to make these vain repetitions, even though the Bible speaks against that. Or I have to, you know, be holier than thou and, you know, speak in, in, in King James Version language only and, uh, you know, speak in holy tongues and you know, otherwise God is not going to understand me. I, I, I think that's completely false. I think it misses the point of intimacy with God. And I, I just don't know why we don't treat God as if we treat everybody else, obviously with reverence, obviously with holiness and respect, but in the sense that we're coming to God with the boldness of the Holy Spirit, we're entering his place and his, his throne room, and we're coming together to speak to God as as I would my best friend, as I would, you know, with my lover, like I, I, there's different ways that you talk to your boss than to how you talk to your coworker or how you talk to an acquaintance or an associate or a business partner or a client. There's different ways that you talk to people and depending on that, that relationship, you're going to talk to them in, in a different manner. You're going to talk professionally or colloquially, uh, in common language and lingua franca or or just however you're going to speak right but if you're talking to your lover you're going to talk to them in a way that you love them and i think this is the best way to speak to the lord to speak to god our father is that you speak to him in love in that in that commonality in that understanding that god has no miscommunication and i think this is the most beautiful part of prayer is that wow like even though I may not know how to articulate my thoughts, I don't have to try to go to that level um, of, of getting lost in translation because God understands what I'm trying to say anyways. Like, you know, when you're talking to somebody and then 
there's either two scenarios. You you don't know how to communicate your idea to them or your feelings, your emotions to them, and they completely miss everything that you're saying. Or they're like, oh, I get it, I get it. And then when they repeat what you said to them, it's like, nah, that's not even what I was trying to say. The other option is that you you pour your heart out to this person and they get it. They get it. They may not get it a thousand percent, but they get it. But then there's communication with God where there is no... There is no misunderstanding. There's no slipping through the cracks. God understands you through and through because he created you. And I, I do this oftentimes where I just don't know what to pray or I don't know what to say. And I'm just there in the presence of God and I'm allowing either my heart to speak, my tears to speak. And it's just like God understands me. And sometimes those tears speak more than paragraphs. The beats of your heart speak more than essays and pages upon pages or, 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 or the silence in your prayers of just listening to God may speak volumes more than you can of just trying to communicate in, in words alone, right? Because communication is not just words. Communication is body language. It is it is uh it is language it is body language it is emotion it is tone it is there's so many aspects that makes language beautiful and prayer is the language of faith therefore go to god spend five minutes in the morning when you wake up you know turn off your alarm put the phone to the side and just father god thank you for this day lord thank you for giving me another opportunity i love you so much father bless me in this day and help me speak with you all the day long and that's what you need to do Pray without ceasing. Pray in your mind. Pray on the way to work. Pray in traffic. Pray, you know, in between calls. Just have that inner dialogue with God. Instead of directing everything to I, 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 and me, 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 as we do in our inner dialogue, have this inner dialogue as if God is there because he is there. So take that intimacy with the Lord and you're going to see transformation. So the second way that you can transform your life as a new Christian believer is you have to be connected to a church and community of believers. You absolutely have to. And prayer is going to lead you to get to that place. You have to trust by faith where you are going. Find the place that you feel comfortable, but that you feel that the Holy Spirit is leading you there because now, I, 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 a lone Christian is a dead Christian. A lone Christian is a dead Christian. I never trust anybody who says, we don't have to go to church. I do not trust anything that comes out of their mouth after that because those are typically selfish individuals that are egotistical and prideful in everything that they have to say because they think that they know it all. The purpose of being a Christian is that you are no longer your own. You are his bought with a price. Your salvation is free to you, but it was for a price for somebody and he paid that price. In being a Christian, your, your purpose is to serve. Your purpose is to receive the word of God, learn the word of God, seek the Lord. But it's also to serve and give up your talents and your gifts and to receive from the talents and gifts of others. Because the body of Christ is just that. It's a body. And if I try to say, I don't need church. I can do this on my own. I'm spiritual and I'm this and I'm that. If I cut off my pinky at this very second and I leave it here, it won't be long before I either A, bleed out or, or inevitably the, the, the finger is going to die. Unless by some miraculous thing that I can go to the hospital, they attach it again and I save the, the pinky right? Any person that is away from the, the, the body of Christ will die. That's why you're not seeing transformation. You need this type of, uh, you, you need this connection to the body of Christ. You need to see the example set by other people and you must submit to authority. You must submit to authority. Any Christian that does not submit to authority, whether foreign or domestic, governmental or, or ecclesiastical is in danger of being in pride and you are in full rebellion against God because Romans 13 says all authority has been appointed by God. So it is absolutely crucial that you get connected to finding a local community where you can grow and build because we all know that success doesn't happen alone. Success doesn't happen in isolation. Success happens in a community in like-minded individuals. So find 
a church. Now, the third and last way in which you can absolutely transform your life is by changing the music that you listen to. If I, I probably should have put this number one because I think it's that powerful. The music that you listen to programs your mind. It is setting you in a specific mentality in a in a specific state of mind. It is so purposeful and so intentional. When I used to listen to rap and, and hip hop and R and B and all these things, what did what did those types of that type of music make me want to do? What did rap want me to do? It made me want to be envious. It made me want to be uh, controversial. It want it made me want to be rebellious and and physical and 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 aggressive and hateful and spiteful and and it made me want to hurt people. Like it sounds like an exaggeration, but it did. It made me want to hurt people. And 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 you know this the 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 R the R and B and hip hop. What what's happening in that music is the over sexualization of men and women is destroying the the image of God and in, in the in the role of men and the role of women and it's just it's convincing you of ideas that are not your own and if you're constantly listening to that music you're listening why because you're paying attention why are you paying attention consciously or subconsciously is because you're you're subscribing to these ideas and inevitably they will affect and transform your life so if you could remove that get rid of all of that and and start cleaning up the music that you listen to listen only to christian music you're going to see how you're going to be more peaceful more focused like it, it's just a whole change it's like taking a shower after going to the gym or or like when you're on a diet one of the greatest things you can do is cut out everything except for water because what water does is it begins to cleanse the system right it it rehydrates the body it it it's, it makes the skin supple and hydrated and it, it it builds up your cells like it's it's so crucial and that's what music is music is like water we need the purity of water music is so powerful that they use it in therapy for alzheimer's patients why because it it brings those people back to a time in which they can remember so much so that they're living in that moment i guarantee you your favorite song you could remember the first time you heard it because it brings you back to that place and it influences your life is the single greatest thing that can change your life. So if you want to be changed, change your music. Change your music, change the way you worship because you're going to worship something. You're either going to worship the world or you're going to worship God. There is no in between. So that's everything that I have for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts. What are some tips? Give me 3 tips in the comment that you think will help transform somebody's life. Um, and, and let's see, how do you want me to get deeper on these topics of, such as prayer, church, and music? Or, or what are your ideas for the next video? So y'all know what it is. It's Lowe's here. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. Hit that like button. It helps our algorithm to get out there. Um, and uh, look out for our social media. Subscribe to the channel because it helps. It helps. It helps. So God bless you guys. Y'all know what it is. It's Lowe's here. We back on the throne of positivity where nobody shall dethrone us. We out.